Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Ryan here with Great Fitness and in this video I'm going to be talking about my personal top five tricep exercises. These are ones I feel like work very well for people but are also enjoyable to do. Not every exercise needs to be the best of the best if that means that you don't like doing it because doing something is better than doing nothing. But I feel like for my top five, these are gonna be sh giving you results anyways. I feel like I have fairly decent triceps. It's one of my stronger points on my body anyways. So, so with that being said, let's just jump into the top five. For number five, it's gonna be narrow push-ups or diamond push-ups, whichever you prefer. I don't really like doing diamond push-ups because it puts too much stress on my wrist. But the good thing about narrow push-ups or diamond push-ups is that they can be done anywhere. That's the that's the benefit of any type of push-up. A lot of people, they, they don't like doing push-ups because once you start getting good at them, you can do a lot of them and you're not really feeling, you're not really feeling like you're doing much or it's not really helping a whole lot or whatever. You, you know, you're not really getting any progressive overload or whatever with push-ups. And I understand that. But there's some ways that you can still get progressive overload by doing something super simple. And with push-ups, you can change the tempo. You know, a lot of people, they just try to push, crank out as many as they can, and they just boom, 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 slow it down, you know, just really try to slow it down when you're doing a push-up. If you can take a couple of seconds to go all the way up, that's gonna be progressive overload. I mean, you're, you're making it harder by making it slower. And if you have somebody working out with you, you can also have them put some weights on your back for you, like a 45 pound plate, maybe two. Uh, the only problem with that is, for me anyways, the plates tend to fall off my back, so it doesn't really work out too well. But, hey, I mean, again, maybe you can get a weighted, weighted vest, I don't know. But something's better than nothing, right? But just in general, narrow, uh, narrow grip push-ups or even diamond grip push-ups are very good tricep exercise. And again, they can be done anywhere. They're easily accessible. Almost anybody can do them. Number four would be dips, primarily tricep dips. The difference between tricep dips and chest dips is tricep dips, you're a little bit more upright and you have a full range of motion. For chest dips, you don't necessarily need to go all the way to the top, but for tricep dips, you do, and you wanna be sure that you get your elbows not necessarily completely locked out, but pretty close to it. You're getting a full contraction in your tricep. Now, the good thing about these is, you know, they're body weight exercises. So many people sleep on body weight exercises. This is one of those ones that you wanna be sure that you're not missing be doing a little bit more body weight exercises. If it gets too easy for you, you can always add some weight. You can hold some dumbbells between your ankles or between your knees, or if your gym is nice, they will have a belt that has a chain that you can loop through some uh, some plates and that, that way you can add some extra weight or whatever. Or on the flip side, if it's too hard, most gyms will have a dip assist machine or even, it's usually a dip assist machine and a pull up assist machine, two in one. So if dips are too hard for you or it puts too much stress on your wrist or puts too much stress on your shoulders or you're overweight or you're older, and in, in, in any case, it's just harder for you to do dips. There's always gonna, there's almost always gonna be assisted dip machines. Either way, you need to be doing your dips because that's gonna be very good for your working out your triceps. Number three, these are ones that I have always been doing since I first started working out and it kind of scared me at first because of the name and that is skull crushers. Skull crushers are great because you're able to get a really good stretch in your triceps because when your arms are out in front of you and you're lowering that weight down over your head or just slightly behind it, and you let it go all the way down there, you get a really good stretch in your triceps. On these, I would recommend using moderately heavy weight. You don't wanna to go too light where you're not really noticing anything at all, but you also don't wanna be going super heavy because you're, you're, you're lowering it right here where your head is. So if you get too tired and you're using a super heavy weight, that's gonna hurt. And yeah, that, 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 that means that you wanna be sure that you don't crush your skull. Now, whenever I'm doing them, uh, like I said, I'll have my elbows back a little further and I actually lower the bar down slightly behind my head so that way if I do get tired or something, I don't accidentally crush my head. D don't crush your head. It's not going to be fun. I promise it's going to hurt. Don't do it. Number two is the close grip bench press. And the difference between a regular bench press and a close grip bench press is your grip is closer. <sighs> Shocker, I know. But for real though, on a regular barbell bench press, you're going to have your arms a fair bit wider than your shoulders. For a close grip bench press, you wanna have have it almost almost shoulder width, maybe just slightly outside depending on how your arms work, and then you're bringing it straight down 
and you're more focusing on your triceps. Now, yes, you will be using your chest some, but the good thing about a close grip bench press is that it is the best way to be able to use a lot of weight on your triceps and to be able to overload them and to be able to overload them as much as possible. There's not many exercises for triceps where you can get well over 130 pounds, not even skull crushers necessarily. So that is why I recommend you doing a close grip bench press. Now, like I said, you wanna have it just about shoulder width, maybe just slightly outside shoulder width. Do not have your hands bef like within shoulder width because whenever you're going down, that's gonna be really putting your wrists at a compromised position where you might actually snap your wrist. Don't do that. I I've not seen it in my gym, thank God, but I have seen videos of it on YouTube does not look fun. And then also be sure to keep your elbows tucked in. Like I said, you want to bring it straight down, keep your elbows tucked tucked in like that. Don't don't let them flare out like that like you would on a, you know, on a normal bench press. You might have your elbows at like 45 degrees or something like that. For a close grip, you want to keep your elbows tucked in close that way you can put more emphasis on your triceps. And then also don't go too fast. If you're just letting the weight fall on you and you're just, you know, exploding it up, you're not gonna be benefiting your tricep too much. Maybe a little bit more so your chest, but not a whole lot on your tricep. Be sure to keep them going slow on the way down and on the way up. And then for number one, it is tricep rope pushdowns. It can be any type of pushdown really, but specifically with ropes on a cable. And that is because with cables, you're gonna be having constant ten tension. No matter where in, in the range of motion you're at, you're gonna be having constant, uh, constant tension. So that's one very good benefit. And whenever you're getting to the bottom of the exercise with the rope, you can pull the rope apart to get even more contraction in your triceps. So like whenever I'm right here and you have the rope right here, and let's say right here is where you would have to stop with a bar with the rope being able to separate it, you can really contract a lot more in your tricep. And it's that ability to be able to get an extra contraction in your tricep that I feel like this exercise deserves the number one spot. I've seen some people bash it, but like I said, I feel like I have fairly decent triceps. I feel like I have a very good mind-muscle connection with my triceps, and I feel like that exercise works it out very well, and that's why I put it all the way at the top. When it comes to tricep pushdowns, whether you're using a rope or not, do not use momentum and do not use your shoulders. I cannot tell you how many times I see people, you, sh you should have your shoulders back like this whenever you're doing it. I see people rounding their shoulders forwards to be able to get some extra help when they're pushing, uh, whenever they're doing a tricep push down. So keep your shoulders back whenever you're doing the exercise. So as my top five going from narrow pushups to dips, to skull crushers, to close grip bench presses, and then ultimately tricep rope pushdowns. If you're not doing any of those, be sure that you're doing them. I mean, most of them are fairly basic staples for working out, but it's like if you've heard someone say, don't be doing tricep rope pushdowns, definitely do tricep rope pushdowns. I don't know who'd be saying that, but they'd be stupid if they were saying it. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button for me. I really appreciate it. Comment down below what your favorite tricep workout is, or if I'm just completely stupid and had something wrong in this video, Hey, whatever floats your boat, I don't really care. Um, also, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that way you'll get more videos like these in the future. Also, be sure to check the description down below for my personal favorite supplements that I use consistently. Most of them are first form. I really love first form, so be sure to also check that out as well. That being said, I'll see y'all in the next video.